Hey everyone, the new version of Android is finally here. It's called Android P and it's currently in a beta, so we won't know what that P stands for just yet, probably later this year. But we're gonna first dive into some of those features that really make this operating system version stand out from the rest and see what exactly Google has brought to the table this time. Take a look at this screen and the first thing you'll notice is this little pill-shaped icon here. Not much else has visually changed, but this is a very radically different way of navigating the Android ecosystem. So traditionally you had the navigation bars, but now Google is trying something new, gestures basically, think iPhone 10. Uh, so this acts as the home button. So you can see it almost has that same exact animation. So ideally when you go to a website or something, press the home button, boom, you go. And you'll also notice the animation sort of slid that way towards the left side. So there's a reason for that because obviously there's no recents button. So how you get there is you do a half swipe up and now you can scroll through your overview recents button. Don't worry, there's still a quick way to quickly switch back to the previous app you were in. That's just a quick swipe to the right. You can jump right in to the previous app or you can press and hold and keep scrolling through. So that's how that works. So you might have also already seen, say for example, if I go to into the dialer app, the back button just magically sort of appears. It obviously looks a little different, but the back button will always consistently appear whenever you're in a different app. So the back button technically is still there. It's really that recent button that's gone and rad radically changed to this new sliding animation. Of course, app drawer is a full swipe up. So again. So you can see that there's that really jarring animation. Again, this is a beta, so I'm, I'm assuming they're gonna fix some of those visual issues, make it look a little more smoother in the final version, but that's how it is, and this is how you get to the recents. So while I like the gesture navigation right here, I do think that they could use some more visual cleanup. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that line does, but I'm not sure I like the fact that there's two pill-shaped things, one long thing and one small thing. To me, it looks a little strange. And of course, like we saw before, just to get to the app drawer, this, this weird jump in right here. Like if I just want to get to that app drawer, it's kind of weird that I can see that cut in. So hopefully they'll tweak some of this, but I do think this is a little strange and I, and I hope they reiterate. But otherwise, I really like jumping through this. I like the uh, new recents menu. Of course, you can cancel things. And the other thing is you might be considering how you can do split screen. You can still do it. It's an extra step, yes, but you just have to tap on the icon, choose an app, and there you go. Overall, Android P introduces a lot more roundedness in the operating system, and a good place to check out some of that is the system tray and notification bar. So you can see the system tray is right up here. The clock is now on the left. You have all that other information. This is now designed to support notch screens, phones with cutouts at the top. So we'll see how that works when we actually play around with this version of Android on one of those notch phones. But overall here you can see things are a little more clean and uniform. They're in these circular icons that are a little colorful. Uh, and generally more, not much else has changed over here. Uh, there's also the settings bar is now here, which that does annoy me because I used to go to settings right from here, but maybe they'll change that by the final version. But that's how you get into settings. And of course, overall here, you can see the rounded corners on this. That's how all the notifications look. And you can actually see manage notifications over here. Jumping into that will basically actually show you most recent notifications from apps. So it says I got a Twitter notification not too long ago, 10 minutes ago out of Slack. So basically there's a little history. And uh, when you jump in, you can toggle the notification preferences that you want. You can also just turn off notifications right then and there. Going back into those notifications though, you can now see that these quick actions are a little more cleaner, they look nicer. Uh, basically you can jump in and reply and, and do things like that, those actions on those notifications. And uh, otherwise you can still do the same things like scheduling those notifications and uh, and uh, even managing those when, when, you, when exactly you get them. Otherwise, here you can check out uh, those tiles. You can't actually expand it in this field anymore, uh, but when you do press it, it basically turns Wi-Fi on and off. And as normal, you can sort of press and hold it to jump into those Wi-Fi settings. 
And the other thing is this brightness slider over here. So this isn't just a normal brightness slider. There's this new feature called adaptive brightness. The phone is actually using machine learning to learn when the times of the day when you change the brightness levels of your screen. So if it knows that at nighttime you constantly decrease the brightness, it'll start learning that and eventually it'll just do that for you when that time of day happens. You can actually see that automatic slider in play. You can see it right there moving up. And so again, it's using a mix of that ambient sensor depending on your lighting, but it also is going to learn throughout the day when exactly you like your peak brightness or low brightness or half brightness. So traditionally on Android phones, when you have this Google search bar here, if you had pressed on that mic, this is what would happen. You'd technically be able to get this screen. And that's basically just jumping straight into Google search. Now, however, when you press this icon right here, you're jumping straight into Google Assistant, which is kind of neat. Of course, you can always traditionally reach Google Assistant by pressing and holding that home button. Or if you have a Pixel 2 XL, you can, of course, just squeeze the phone. There's also two new features that we can't really show quite yet because it's not available in the open beta. They're called Slices and Actions, and they actually use machine learning uh, to better your experience in Android. So Actions, for example, kind of uh, does what it sounds in that when you open up your app drawer, you'll see two little new icons somewhere in there that uses machine learning to predict what you'll want to click on. So say if you're about to reorder your food from your favorite delivery app, uh, and there's a specific time of day you generally do that, the phone will learn that you do that, and basically it'll offer up a, a quick shortcut to jump into your app, not just jump into your app, but also jump into that specific food item that you wanted to little order and uh, complete that action for you. Same thing, for example, if you were about to message someone like your spouse at a certain time of day, uh, your phone will sort of bring that contact up and the messaging app that you want to use and make it into a quick little nice button that you can click on to jump straight into that action. Slices is actually something that's pretty neat and we can actually see a, a brief demo of what you can expect to see. Uh, it's also using machine learning, but basically it's deep linking into apps. So for example, if, you, if you're going to pull up your phone and do a quick search uh, and say you're searching for either an app installed on your phone or you're looking for, uh, if you search Japan and you know you're going to Japan, there's stuff over here that will show up that basically deep links into that app. So for example, if I search Lyft, eventually with slices, Lyft will be able to add a couple options right here for me to directly jump into finding a driver to get me home or finding a driver to get me to work, two actions that I do a lot. So uh, basically it's really going to be tailored and, and up to the developer to sort of make sure they have that functionality baked in. But the idea is you're going to be able to do some personal searches for phone-based things right here and you'll find quick shortcuts that give you a slice of that app that you can then further jump into. So here you can look at that notifications again, a little rounded, looks a little cleaner, and largely here what's new is this uh, reply functionality. We've seen some of it before through some kind of a beta app, but now this is baked into Android. Uh, it's not working in every app, so it, I guess it depends on the developer to add it in, but Slack basically now lets you add some of those smart replies so you can add quick messages to conversations. This stuff will get better over time because it's using machine learning. So it'll learn the way you type. It'll offer better responses for the way you type. Currently, this is probably nothing I'd ever say. Uh, but for example, let's see, press OK and see how that goes. So now if I jump into the Slack app and uh, jump into that conversation, you'll basically see that message went through right there. There are a lot of other quality of life additions to Android P that just overall make day-to-day -day usability a lot better. And one of them is the new interface for the volume control button. So basically now when you press the volume bu control button, it's this vertical interface that shows up right next to the, where the button is located. So as you can see, it actually defaults to your media volume. So almost always when you change the volume, physically, it will default to that media volume. And that's going to be a boon for a lot of people, but Google also knew that you'd still want to change your actual phone volume controls, and that's why there's three toggles right here. Basically, if you can just press it three times, and you toggle between vibrate only, completely muted, and sound. And of course, if you want to fine-tune those details, you can just press the settings button and access those greater controls right here. So what's new with screenshots is you can actually press the power menu to access them right there. 
So let's try that. Don't forget the same way of doing the power button and the volume down button is still there. But now you can see this notification popped up with an edit button. And that's actually new in Android P. So if, let's tap that button. You get this new quick screenshot interface where you can mark stuff up. So there's a little option for different colors. Say if I wanted to say that fix that or whatever you really want to do. I, look, I think this is a highlighter. Yep, it's a highlighter. And of course you can uh, undo or redo and you can save it and share it right then and there. Basically just make screenshots that much faster to share. And it's something that should have been in Android a long time ago. So we've all had that problem of rotating our phones and not intending to, and then the whole app rotates and it just messes everything up. Google has actually added a really neat addition that drastically improves uh, this interaction. So basically right now, if I'm in an app, accidentally rotated my phone, I didn't want the content to rotate, boom, it didn't actually rotate. But if I didn't mean to do that, just press that little icon that showed up here and now it rotated. So now let me switch back. It won't actually rotate until I tap this button that shows up here. And it's a really neat and fast way of using that space to change and improve the way you interact with your phone. So a couple new things happen with typing and text in Android P. One is when you're actually moving the cursor now, you can actually see that magnification happen, just like in iOS. Been around in iOS for a long time, but it's finally now on Android. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty simple. It just makes it easier to see stuff. The other thing is, now when you double tap, you see how it naturally selected the entire text? It's because it identified it as one subject. Eventually, you're gonna be able to have the option to get extra third-party options to jump straight into. So for example, if I typed in Taylor Swift or if I saw Taylor Swift and I selected it, you'll maybe see a Spotify button right here or a Google Play Music button right here where you can just tap it, jump straight into all the music by Taylor Swift. And the same applies for things like if I click on an address for Google Maps, that's already available in Oreo, but with P, you can see this expanded to third-party apps. And another new thing that Android P brings is that now you can see the battery status right on the always on display. This might not apply to all Android phones. It'll vary by manufacturer. So on the Pixel, for sure, you can definitely see the battery life right there. So the settings menu in Android P is also now a little different. Uh, some of those categories are all the same and things are hidden away in some of the same sections as Android Oreo. But now you have this much more colorful uh, bar, kind of reminds you of a touch whiz, but it's kind of playful. And here you have this rounded search bar that you can use to search for different functions on the phone. But again, some of these functions are all the same. Still uh, looks pretty similar to what Android Oreo offered and you can dive into all your settings right here, just like that. So Google knows that we use our phones too much. I think everyone knows that at this point, but they're adding a couple features in Android P that basically makes it easier for you to manage your time a little better and see what apps you're spending too much time with. It's called digital well-being, and there's actually four key features in that. We're actually only able to show you one because it's only currently available on this beta right now, and that's Do Not Disturb. Of course, you know that Do Not Disturb has already been available, but they've severely revamped this to just basically be way more useful. Now it's very simple. Press it and you'll block every single notification. You can see that notification right there disappeared. And basically you won't be able to get anything, hiding notifications, won't make any sound, completely sort of turned off from any alerts. And that's very neat, very helpful. Of course, when you jump into those settings, you can see a couple more things. Uh, you can mute the sound, make it sure it mutes the sound and vibration. You can block visual disturbances and choose when exactly you want it to. A lot more details and options for you to dive into. And of course, you can even choose how long you want it to go and set up times for when you want that mode to kick in. So that's Do Not Disturb, but the other couple features are Dashboard, which is basically gonna be a dashboard in somewhere here in your settings, where you'll be able to basically see how much time you're spending with each of these apps. So if I'm spending too much time in Chrome or Gmail, I'm spending too much time sending emails, basically I'll be able to see how much time I spent, and maybe I'll reflect on that and try to spend a little less time Again, a lot of it is gonna be up to the user to really uh, think about if they want to change some of their habits to maybe spend some more time off their phones. 
but it's nice to see that feature in place. And one other thing that I think is nice is a new feature called App Timer. Again, it's not in the beta yet, but you'll be able to basically use a time limit to see how long you want to make sure you use Gmail for. So if I only want to use Gmail for two hours a day, I can set that timer. What happens is the Gmail icon in here, for example, will turn into a grayscale color right after that limit ends so that I know, hey, you should not really be tapping this icon because you personally wanted to not use that app again for the rest of the day. So again, it's a nice feature. It relies on you to sort of proactively make sure you're adhering to your own standards. But of course, you can completely ignore this stuff if you want. And the final feature in digital well-being is actually tied to Google Assistant. Again, it's not working right now, and we're not sure what phones it'll be available on, if it'll be an Android-wide thing or if it's specific to uh, just the Pixel. It's called Wind Down, and you'll basically be able to tell Google Assistant to wind down, and what happens is the phone will go into this complete grayscale, and Google said that'll help check your desire to click on icons when you're in bed and about to go to sleep. So it'll go into grayscale, it'll turn on Do Not Disturb, and then it'll sort of just turn on automatically to what time you set or when your alarm is, for example. Adaptive battery is another key feature in Android P. Basically, Google is using DeepMind technology to analyze and predict the apps you'll use next. And over time, this will get better. The phone will understand what apps you'll use. And so it sort of readies the resources to prep those apps to make sure it has enough juice and resources to be able to run those apps. And ideally, that means it's not powering every single other app you have installed. So the less you use an app, basically the Android operating system will know and it'll not allocate as much resources to it, which is why it says you'll see uh, less frequent notifications. But of course, when you're charged and up and running, you'll get those notifications. Of course, you can always turn it off, but the idea is that it'll really understand the apps you use the most, get those ready to work, and make sure it has enough battery for those apps. And uh, that should theoretically help save your battery life. And again, that requires to you to use your phone more uh, to be able to understand and predict your behavior so that uh, it can save you battery life. And there's a couple more features we didn't really touch on. There's some under the hood stuff, for example, apps running in the background now can't use the camera or microphone. It's a great feature that we think should have been in there a long time ago, but we're happy it's there. Again, you can check digitaltrends.com out for the full list of Android features. Some of these features might actually be different by the time the official rollout happens in August, but that's also when we'll likely hear what Android P stands for. So in the meantime, check back to digitaltrends.com and see if your phone is capable of downloading the beta.